practice has been in existence since the early 1960s, and I joined the practice uh, close to 20 years ago. Um, it's a general comprehensive ophthalmology practice. Uh, when I came in, I brought glaucoma fellowship training from Mount Sinai in New York here. Uh, we see approximately, um, for a given doctor, somewhere between 30 to 60 patients per day. And the number of SLTs that we've been doing since we, were, since we acquired SLT has been uh, approximately half a dozen per week, I would say. We do a lot of cataract surgeries here, but because of my glaucoma training, the, my practice is very glaucoma biased. So I would say among my patients, 30 to 40 percent have glaucoma or ocular hypertension. Uh, other procedures that we offer in the office uh, include YAG capsulotomies, uh, focal retinal lasers, uh, we do digital, digital uh, retinal photography and angiography in the practice. Uh, a lot of our practice is structured around cataract surgeries because we do somewhere between five and six hundred surgeries per year. So all the measurements associated with accurate, uh, accurate cataract surgery outcomes are also here. The choice that doctors make whenever they're performing a procedure is in large part based on published evidence. A and I won't dispute the published evidence, but it's nevertheless true that in, in different hands, different procedures have different success rates. I don't have an explanation, quite frankly, for why I'm getting better results with SLT than a ALT. I don't. My technique. Uh, for argon was strong, you know, anterior portion of the trabecular meshwork. We're looking for a mild burn, putting down the proper number of spots. And I would say we were getting 75 to 80 percent response, which was, which was good. And then if the patient needed it again, the next time around you could bank on a response that was less so than the first, and then when you were done with two argon lasers, you were clearly done. What I'm getting with selective laser trabeculoplasty is 90 percent success. And I will tell you that I'm very, very careful in my technique. I know that some doctors struggle to see uh, the champagne bubbles. We just take our time. We just take our time, make sure we're exquisitely focused, that the aiming beam is exactly where we want to put it. We're putting down exactly the same number of spots in the exact same locations on every single eye. So our procedure is very uniform. And I verify each time, every single patient, and I have yet to have a single patient that I did not see this, that I'm seeing champagne bubbles at least on some of the burns. We, we treat with uh, a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory after the procedure, not with steroids. And we routinely see the patient back in four to five weeks. Now I will tell you that we have had a couple patients, maybe uh, over the last four months, Six, six patients, let's say half a dozen patients, who have not responded at the one month point. But before determining whether they were true non-responders, I've had them, I had them come back one month later. So in other words, I gave them two months instead of the one month to respond. And when I say, you know, if they budged a little bit, I say, let's give it a, a little bit more time. Seventy percent of the time they're coming in with a greater pressure reduction. So it's clear it's a dynamic process and the, the idea that everybody should respond by four weeks is a little bit artificial. We have had some people non-responders, but it's, un, it's unusual. And, and when we talk about this to patients, we tell them very openly, it's not 100% successful. But in my hands, there's 90% of patients who are getting a meaningful lowering of their eye pressure. That's, and, and they're willing to take that chance. In new, in new glaucoma patients, um, I would say that when given both options, and we give patients both options, we don't limit, you know, eye drop versus laser as, as first line treatment, when presented with the evidence, nearly 100% of people are opting for SLT. Nearly 100%. And, and that is the biggest change in, in the practice since we switched from argon laser trabeculoplasty to selective laser trabeculoplasty. Because we framed the same question to patients. 
you can have argon laser trabeculoplasty, or you can have dye drops. But we were very careful in telling patients it could be done one more time. It causes burns to the trabecular meshwork. And when comparing the two options, the patients opted for eye drops. They opted for eye drops. When comparing the, the eye drop versus SLT option, that sounds like the right choice for me, Doc. And you know, we don't feel like we're twisting their arms. We're not, we're not doing this because, oh, it, it's only the reimbursement that we're, we're, we're trying to coerce all of our glaucoma patients into having laser. We're thrilled. They come in a month later, their pressure's great, see in six months, and they're happy and we're happy. And we feel we're doing a better service for them. The Luminous SLT has far exceeded our expectations. It has resulted in improved pressure control beyond what we were anticipating, enormous patient acceptance. It's an outstanding piece of technology and well-made piece of equipment. And in short, we're delighted with it. We're using it leaps and bounds beyond what we thought we were going to be using it. Um, and, we, and we feel overall, as, uh, as an ophthalmic practice and, and a glaucoma-focused ophthalmic practice in our community, that we're doing a better service for our glaucoma patients. Are you having difficulties with your eye drops? Why, you know, let's list them. They're difficult to remember to take every day, especially if you're on more than one eye drop a day. Numerous studies showing um, high rates of noncompliance. And as doctors, we know that ourselves. I have bottles of vitamins I'm supposed to take on, on my uh, bathroom sink. What percentage of days am I taking those? I'm noncompliant. So compliance is an issue. The inconvenience of carrying around your eye drops every day and having to put them in sometimes in public, that's an inconvenience. The inconvenience of running to the pharmacy to purchase one, yet one more medication every month, that's an inconvenience. That's time out of your life, okay? The costs of those medications. And then the big one, when we start to really ask patients, how are you doing on your eye drops? And are you having any symptoms? It's a litany. It's a litany of drops. And you know, the pharmaceutical companies are only too happy to tell us how well, well things are tolerated. But the reality is red eye, stinging, blurring, eyelash growth, pigmentation of the eyelids. We've had to stop two patients on topical beta blockers over the last couple months because of slowed heart rate. One fellow's heart rate was below 40. Okay, so these are not benign products. They're not benign products. And if you spend the time asking your patients, are you having any difficulties with your eye drops, they will tell you. But what the patients want to do, if you don't ask, is they want to get along. They know they need these eye drops to control their pressure, or so they think. They know they need these eye drops to control their pressure. So they're willing to put up with the side effects. Or they figured, I need to put up with the side effects. They've rationalized uh, their need to, to take eye drops. But Sometimes eye drops are necessary, but if it were you or me and somebody said, I'd like to bring your pressure down six points, do you want to take an eye drop for which you have to run to the pharmacy every single month? It might have side effects. You're going to forget to take it even if you're good 10 to 20 percent of the time. Uh, we know that the pressure when you take it varies throughout the day from low when you take it to higher when it starts to wear off what would you want? You know, that, and I think when I, when I asked myself that question, I said, would I want a one minute painless laser that had a chance of lowering my pressure or would I want to subject myself to eye drops forever? And they asked, well, how long will I need to take these? And you know, they're under the assumption, oh, I take them a couple weeks, it's like an eye infection. No, these are forever. You know, these are forever and they may stop working in a little while and then we, can need to, we may need to change your medications, or we may need to put you on more than one medication. So, I, you know, I think of doctors knowing all that they know about eye drops were to ask themselves that question, that question. Um, 
they would prefer laser too. And you know, once you feel good about the, the success rate of SLT, once you feel good about the, the side effect profile, once the patients come in and say, it was like nothing. And that's what they come in saying. Wow, it was like, like you did this thing, I didn't even feel it, I came in a month later and my pressure's lower. That's great, you know? Once you imbibe those results and those belief systems, then the next patient who comes in with a high pressure, suddenly you're much more positive about speaking about SLT. And I think in doctors, you know, who are considering whether to go to SLT, who already have argon in their office, Okay, typically it's somebody who's, you know, wondering whether, is it worth the expense? And, you know, I can just tell you from personal experience, we were doing three argons a month, three argon laser trabeculoplasties a month, and we're doing 25 selective laser trabeculoplasties a month. It's not because we get more money. It's exactly the same reimbursement. It's because I believe in the technology, and my results are better. So it's made me a believer. Well, first of all, I think it's important that you know that I'm not being paid for this testimonial. I, I think that's really important and, you know, because any doctor could say anything getting paid for the testimonial. Um, I was late to the party for SLT. SLT is not a, a new therapy. It's been around. And when, when it was compared to argon laser trabe trabeculoplasty, the only advantage that I could see uh, was the repeatability versus argon. You know, there were a lot of studies out in the literature showing similar results, similar results. But I completely underestimated how much we were going to use this procedure. And the ability to repeat the procedure, number one, and secondly, the better results that I was getting in my practice with SLT versus ALT has made this a much more common procedure for me to recommend. So the patients, the patients love it. Uh, it's fast. On, on average, it takes about a minute to perform. 75% of patients feel nothing when the procedure's done, and maybe 25% of them feel an, an occasional prickling. That's, that's, a, that's a good, um, good that patients don't have those side effects. And then the, the thing that puts smiles on all of our faces is the patients come in a month after it's done, and our number, since we've been performing SLT over the last several months, has been 90% of patients are achieving uh, target pressures or have a, had a meaningful response, a meaningful response uh, with respect to their pressures. So those numbers dwarf the results that I was getting with argon, with argon laser. Plus, the patients are reassured to know, hey, if in two years, three years, four years, I need to have this again, I'm willing to do it. At, at, that was the, I think, the major hurdle for patients when they're considering uh, undergoing a procedure. Does it hurt? Is it dangerous? What are the potential side effects? What's the worst thing that could happen? And to, to tell them, listen, every few years you might need this, you might not. Uh, that's a strong recommendation, and the patients have been quick to adopt uh, that, that strategy. Well, we've been long customers of Luminous and its predecessor, Coherent, and it's been around a long time. In fact, we have a Coherent Argon laser, which is 25 years old and has performed flawlessly. Right? There's a lot of great manufacturers out there, a lot of great equipment out there. But what we found, especially with some major manufacturers for equipment that we have in the, pra in the practice, that the support stops the moment the piece of equipment enters the door. And certainly this is, can be very true of maintenance contracts, which we're only too happy to sign annually, in which we're supposed to get, you know, uh, fast track when we call up on the telephone and repairs. So I will tell you that it's important to distinguish. Not, al not only are we happy with Luminous, but what else is out there? And the equipment is great from the other manufacturers, but we find the process stops after the sale. A lot of companies sort of leave you at the door when the, when the, when the piece of equipment gets dropped off. 
They may be great pieces of equipment, but ultimately, you're completely dependent on the level of support that you get. We've only had to make a few calls so far to uh, Luminous, uh, questions about operations. I would just tell you that the attitude is very helpful. We're not put on hold for 30 minutes. People pick up the phone rather than, you know, being put through to an operator and promises to be called back by the technical, su technical support people. And we've all been through this. So we know the companies that are happy to take our money every year for maintenance contracts and never call us back and treat us like dirt <laughs> when, it, when it's time to support the instrument. They can't be bothered. And they can't be bothered because it's a cost. But Luminous has, has already Luminous has already struck me as a company that really believes in the support to its customers. Uh, if our technicians call with a question, they're treated courteously, promptly, and, and given the right answers, answers that make sense to us and that are helpful for us. We found that we can uh, heartily recommend this procedure in advertising. So in advertising, we are finding that new patients who are treated for glaucoma elsewhere on eye drops are coming to the practice and wondering whether they can get off their eye drops. So that, in, in terms of you know, our goal with those types of patients, we're attempting to minimize or reduce their eye drops, either because they're having side effects or they're, they're too expensive or for whatever reasons they want to get off of. In terms of making new glaucoma diagnoses in the practice here, you know, that's not all that common. I'd say that's maybe 10% of our practice. Where we're getting most of our patients are, uh, number one, patients who want to get off their medications for various reasons, and number two, patients who are on medications but whose glaucoma is uncontrolled. So that, you know, that, that forms the bulk of the SLTs that we're doing. I will tell you that we placed an ad um, for SLT in one of the local newspapers. And it was targeted at other patients other than the ones in our own practice. You know, and it designed to tell the patients that, hey, we have this technology in the practice um, and just want to make you aware of it. What we didn't anticipate was that our very own patients were coming into the practice saying, why didn't you offer this to me? Because Absolutely, I'm having these problems you listed in your advertisement. And I, of course I have burning and I don't make a big deal about it, but I figured I had to live with it. So can I, can I, have, this, can I have this procedure? And so we're finding even within our own practice, people who we thought, you know, just cruising every, every six months uh, on their two to three glaucoma eye drop regimen, in fact, they, they wanted to have they wanted to have this procedure. SLT has completely changed the way we're managing glaucoma. And I, I say this as somebody who was very late in adopting the technology. I, I balked when this first became available at the price. Like many ophthalmologists, I said, how many am I going to do a month? And am I going to be able to do enough per month uh, to support the purchase of this product. And so we have been an eye drops first, argon laser second practice. And, and I think in large part because we knew the limitations of argon, we knew it was going to buy us some time, we knew it wasn't repeatable beyond the second treatment. With our better results with SLT, with the repeatability, with the high patient um, satisfaction with this technology, when somebody comes in and needs lower pressures, we tell them about eye drops. We tell them about SLT. We quote the published studies, but we very openly now discuss it is our preferred technique. We think it's a better choice for you than going on eye drops unless you're skittish about technology or undergoing the procedure. We believe in it. These are our, these are our uh, these are our numbers, these are our results, and we think it's the better way to go. The major obstruction for us in adopting SLT when this first came out was cost. The machines were expensive. They were expensive. And frankly, 
I made the mistake, and I would, I would caution all doctors who are going through this same process, I made the mistake of looking at how many argon laser trabeculoplasties I was performing in calculating how many SLTs. So let's say I was doing three argon laser trabeculoplasties a month. Well, if I switch to SLT, even though it's repeatable, that's not going to be enough to support the purchase price of this equipment. What I didn't anticipate, what I completely underestimated was, it's a better procedure. It's not an equal procedure, it's a better procedure. It's not a, just a different light beam treating the same structure. It has many advantages, many advantages. So because we're wholeheartedly now recommending this procedure versus, I won't call it skittishness, but hesitancy in pushing argon laser trabeculoplasty, we're doing six to seven times the number of laser procedures we were doing before. And our, and our patients are happier. We're very happy with uh, the Lum Luminous SLT. The unit is compact, it's quiet, um, it hooks up to a Hogstrite style slip lamp. We had an extra one hanging around and it was easy to hook it up. It happens to be the slit lamp that I'm most comfortable in. So from a usability standpoint, I'm happy that uh, you know I'm already using equipment with which I'm comfortable. What I would tell any new uh, prospective buyer in whether to consider SLT is to avoid the mistake that caused me to be on the sidelines for 10 years. Don't look at how many patients would be argon laser trabeculoplasty candidates. Rather look at how many patients in your practice have glaucoma on a weekly basis. And that, that should be the driving number.